Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, Atiyullah, Tiya Rasul, Ulul Amri minkum. And <coughs> always a reminder for myself, Ana Abdukul Ajisu Da'ifu, Miskinu, Zalimu Jahal. And but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah, in this holy month of Safar, Subhana Man Huwa Alimul Hakeem. That in this way of Shams al Arifin and this path of Allah, that the second lunar month in this reality of nine and the power of nine takes us to 18, Surat al Kahf. And in this way of the heart into the Divinely Presence, the mountain of all realities, the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad that the mountain is the stability, the mountain is the source in which to seek refuge from the difficulties of the world. And hence Allah gives to us a sharat, the cave, that enter into the cave and be from Ashab al kaf look to their example. And alhamdulillah today brings us to Ayatul Kareem, the 60th verse in which the relationship of this journeying of the cave Allah wants us to remember the journey of Sayyidina Musa Gives <clears throat> from the highest example so that nobody can say, no it's not me, I'm a alim, I don't need these things. Sayyidina Musa one whom hears Allah means such a, a level of yaqeen in which Allah allows of this great Prophet of Allah to hear, to hear a voice continuously in a dialogue and still he was in need of a guidance, a need of a reality above every knower Allah has a, another level of knowledge, another group of people in their understanding that Allah's knowledge has no end. Allah's oceans have no beginning and no end. And in this way of reality Sayyidina Musa set out after he had his vision that, Ya Rabbi I want to see you, Allah you can't see me. But let me show you from my great signs, from my glory and he witnessed. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Just what he witnessed and ulama describe. He witnessed the light of Sayyidina Muhammad Then in the knot we recite or ask Nabi Musa what he saw. As a result of seeing that reality he took Yeshua and set out on his journey. I won't stop until I reach where the two rivers meet. And alhamdulillah Allah gives Holy Qur'an is an immense guidance that everything within it is a portal, is a dimension of light from Malakut, from the heavens in which every letter has an angel and every angel has an energy sending out and every effect of Holy Qur'an is a dress upon insan. And that the two rivers meet is the reality of La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah because of what he witnessed he wanted the higher reality. And we said last night that in his journeying because this is now the opening of the understanding of tafakkur, 
because Allah gave to us and all who are following at the beginning of Surat Al-Kahf that enter into the cave and then I'll seal their hearing and that to dress you from a rahmah and settle your affairs. And all of the beginning of Ashab Al-Kahf was about the state of entering into a cave and that Allah trained the servants of this reality, their path is Samina wa atana, that I hear and I obey. And that if they can discipline their hearing, the entire being can be brought into submission. Not discipline your seeing, people want to see and they do every bad thing and listen to no one. Seeing is from shaitan, yeah, anybody can see because they close their eyes and a devil will come up to them and start showing them. But hearing has to do with Rahman, it has to do with taslim, to hear and to discipline, submit your will back to the will of Allah That He gave this free will and people feel that they can be a wild animal upon this earth because they have free will. And the greatest submission, once you've submitted your time, your money, your effort, the greatest submission is the submission of your will, that I turn my will back to you Ya Rabbi and I want to learn how to submit. And then everything I do in this school of tarbiyah and taskiyah is that I'm going to submit. My will is not important, my comments are not important, my desire is not important. Nothing, my opinion is not important, just submit. With every waswas that shaitan is going to put upon, this is the greatest battle for humanity are their ears. Look what shaitan is doing, look at what he plays upon people, look what he puts upon people, look at all the sights and sounds that are attacking insan and you know where the true battle is. As a result, Allah guided whom He guides, waliun murshidun. Those whom Allah guides they have a wali and a murshid. And those whom Allah does not guide they will never have a wali nor a murshid. And they think they're clever and say, there are no walis in Qur'an, well, not for you because Allah said you're not going to get one. But those whom Allah guided they must have, they must have that guidance and as a result they're being guided on how to submit their ears. When they come to the discipline of submission of the ears, this is now the opening of muraqabah. What Sayyidina Musa salam wanted of that reality was a Muhammadan reality. And Allah directed to Sayyidina Musa I'm going to send you one of those servants, not the servant, I'm going to send you to one of my servants that attained the rahmah and then we taught him knowledges. Means that he attained a proximity to rahmatan lil alameen, he attained a proximity to the Muhammadan haqqaiq. And as a result of that proximity, the knowledge that begins to flow within the heart because of the nearness to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad which today they do the opposite. Today they go to study and then they think they'll gain a nearness to Prophet well, Allah gave the formula different for these rijal that they attained the rahmah, then we taught them knowledges. So they attained the school of tarbiyah and taskiyah in which they were taught how to be merciful, how to be kind, how to be humble. This is the foundation of all structures that when the servant is taught to be nothing, to be humble, to be down and crushed, this is a foundation in which Allah will build His heavenly kingdom upon that person. Not upon the foundation of pride and arrogance, otherwise it will be hijacked immediately by shaitan and the person will find themselves to be Pharaoh, where they think they are the Lord Most High. 
Based on that reality Sayyidina Musa wanted that secret, I want with this La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah And as he's walking on the path with Yeshua salam, they had brought a lunch for themselves, a dried fish and then they passed and said, let's eat now. He says, this is ajeeb, I forgot to tell you shaitan made me to forget. When we were at that rock and I was putting the fish, this dead fish, dried fish, it came to life. It was ajeeb and this hoot, hoot jumped into the water. He got upset, said, that's what the sign I was looking for, meaning it was not something physical. There was not a bearded man standing there which they ignored, they had travelled a long distance. He was exhausted, means he's asking now something of a spiritual realm, one whom is hearing Allah Allah is then describing how difficult it was. Allah didn't give him cheat notes, Ah oh, Musa he's right there, that he was seeking. And what he was seeking he knew is unseen and he knew that he had to have looked for signs of that reality. But if you're busy seeking you're gonna pass it if you're going too fast. If this one whom hears Allah passed it, well 99% of humanity definitely will pass it because this is a, a great Prophet of Allah <laughs> who has a gift of hearing the Divinely Presence. So it's not going to be something visual, it's not going to be something obvious. You're not going to see out of the zawiyas of the shaykhs all, all sorts of uh, sparkling and simmering realities enticing you like Las Vegas to come in because that's what shaitan does. Puts dazzling stars and lights to make you remember paradise. And that's why people are attracted to these lights and all these shining and glimmering because the heavens is luminous but their system is dajjal and fake but it requires a sincere heart which Nabi Musa realized, no I was waiting for a sign, we passed it. And the fish came to life, that was the sign I was looking for. Knowing that these servants they are from Bahrul Hayat, they are the evergreen servants of Allah and they represent the reality of that greenness that Sayyidina Muhammad so dearly loved. They represent the resurrection and bringing everything back to life. He understood that reality of Sayyidina Khidr, Sayyidina Abbas Khidr so let us go back, this time we're going to do it a lot slower. So retracing his steps and connecting the heart, at which time with that sincerity he was able then to witness the presence of Sayyidina Abbas Qadr This <coughs> This now gives to us the realities of muraqabah, that this life of ours is a journey and everybody wants this journey to open up physically. When they're grocery shopping, when they're driving, when they come and physically sit in the presence of people, they think things will open for them, they're expecting things to open for them, none of which have anything to do with that reality. That the one whom hears Allah has to go out on a mission and the one whom he wants to meet to become rushed, means above his uloom he asked Allah I want to be rushed, means I want to be cooked in the presence of your Divinely Son, the one who represents your eternal light. That's why Prophet if everyone else is a moon, Sayyidina Muhammad is the sun. Everyone else is just a reflection of the light. 
Prophet is the one pushing the light of Allah out towards creation. That's when you become rushed is that you have to be in the presence of the sun. You can be as luminous as you want as a moon but until you meet your sun, until you meet that reality, sit within the presence of that reality and truly become a reflection. Because La ilaha illallah because this is all based on the usul and tawheed. La ilaha illallah only shines on Muhammadun Rasulullah There's nothing bayna, there's nothing between La ilaha illallah to mim, it connects. Allah didn't put an angel in between, didn't put another prophet in between, didn't put me and you in between. But there's nothing between La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah, it's one, one sentence. This reflection of Divine only reflects to Muhammadun Rasulullah So get behind the line. You're not going to cut out Muhammadun Rasulullah and Allah going to address you. So when the Prophet of Allah is understanding that, then definitely he's, I want where these two rivers meet. I want to be in the presence of that reality. Well you can't just go there like that because you have a title, that title means nothing to Sayyidina Muhammad So sent then to meet Sayyidina Khidr who going to give him a rough time. How bad you want to meet Prophet Then you have to be humbled, crushed, brought down. That's why the first thing he said to him, how are you going to have patience with me on things that you have no knowledge of? Oh that's a big hit for somebody who hears Allah Immediately to test that what you, what you here for? And the depth of the tariqah means this way of muraqabah is to get to know your reality. Don't think you came to the shaykhs and you like and dislike the shaykh or you think you know the shaykh because his dialogue with Sayyidina Khidr through these few verses of Ayatul Kareem is giving to us a big understanding. I wanted knowledge so I asked Allah Allah set an appointment at such and such place, you'll, you'll go meet one of these servants thinking that Maybe he'll observe the servant, check him out and say, what's so good about you? What's special about you? I hear Allah Then whatever transpired was based on Sayyidina Musa salam trying to qualify Sayyidina Khidr Why'd you break this boat? Why did you harm that child? Why did you not charge for the wall? That wasn't seeking a reality. You were trying to credential Sayyidina Khidr But your promise was to be humbled by Prophet You weren't here to credential the shaykh, verify the shaykh. You're here to reach to your grave, not his, you're not sleeping in the, in the proximity of him, you're not holding judgment with him, you have nothing to do with the shaykh. The shaykh is merely a mirror for you so that you can find and realize your journey. What you dislike about the shaykh is actually you. Whatever characteristic you're finding wrong is actually you, you never saw the shaykh, his reality is not known to you. If you drive by in a car, can I say that, oh I know who you are? No, I just saw your car drive by, I don't know anything about who you are. I don't know who's inside you, what reality that reality is. That's what we're going to take from it, this, this understanding in this round. That he's entering into a portal, 
he's asking to reach to a Muhammadan haqqaiq. He's being asked by Allah and agreeing that you have to humble yourself because you can't go with your presence, your, your crown into the presence of this king. Nobody goes with a crown into a presence of a king. You have to take your crown off and then you have to crawl in that presence to show humility. So you weren't there to verify who Sayyidina Khidr was, that's why the dialogue has so much difficulty. Why? So I told you don't ask any questions until I talk to you. And again, why? I said, look I told you there are no questions. Why until the last three times he said, oh, this is going to be rude, you're a big Prophet of Allah but this is where me and you we part, it's not going to work anymore. But the reality and the depth of that for the tariqahs is that we're asking now to enter a state of muraqabah. That you have to have a relationship with the unseen reality of the shaykh, unseen reality of Sayyidina Muhammad awliyaullah, all of them, they're all in that cave. It's not something visible, it's not something because you saw his physicality therefore now you have a, a special access. That just made it easier for you to be able to have that love within your heart and build your spiritual connection. And if you don't and don't build the spiritual connection all your life you'll be passing that cave, ah, I don't know where that was, I didn't know what the holy night was. Uh, nothing, I've been all these years sitting here and nothing happened to me. But the tariqahs come and say, no, no this is, this is now Ayatul Kareem, the 60th verse begins now the understanding of muraqabah. We said all of Qur'an is the secrets of portals, we'll say portals because Prophet used the word paradise. People are confused that paradise is like you have to die, well no, paradise is existing on earth everywhere. The circles, the halaqahs, the awliya, all the rawza sharif, all the maqams of these awliyaullah are paradises. You don't have to die to go to paradise, you have to die to feel paradise, means you'll be training on how to observe how to humble, how to lower the bad characteristics so that you can feel the barakah and the blessings of paradise that are all around us. So we'll call it portals because these are the words that shaitans are using on their sciences making it sound like woo, woo hoo, spooky. Well, Prophet gave all these sciences thousands of years ago for his nation and was the one who gave the knowledges from beginning of time to the end of time all within the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad And of their knowledge and of his knowledge they understand very little bit of it. Ayatul Kursi describes Prophet What's the… That of his knowledge they encompass very little of it. Means not something they're capable of understanding what Allah gave to the king of all creation. All the creation of seen and unseen worlds are under the Sultanate of Sayyidina Muhammad So means then this opening from Ayatul Kareem of the 60th verse and the reality of Sayyidina Khidr which Allah put into Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah in the shajara. He is one of our shaykhs, not taking barakah, other tariqahs take the barakah of Sayyidina Khidr Sayyidina Abbas Khidr is in the tariqah chain, is one of the shaykhs of the tariqah and must be lending his support to the chain at all times. This is Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah, as a result of that he's teaching and inspiring that is, you're going to come into this cave, you have to train for the unseen. This barakah, this power is all going to be based on your ability to connect with unseen. 
So there's a maqam in Turkey where they say, oh at this maqam there's a big wow sign. Why? Because the who men, they're the hidayat of wadud. Anyone who wants to be a who man, he has to have hidayat, guidance. But he has to have the character of wadud, that's what makes him to be who. He carries Allah's Divinely love and good character. And you can sit there all you want, you won't see anything if you don't have sincerity. If you have sincerity and good heart is right there sitting in front of you. Because of that barakah they're teaching then the tariqahs, muraqabahs, all that that you have to stop at that junction, that you have to understand this is the secret of hayat, the shaykhs can revive the dead. But they don't go to the qabr and bring out zombies but it's the dead heart, the hearts that are losing hope in this dunya. Just begin to listen to the talks, begin to connect your heart with the talks, they carry the secret of muhi al Mahya dunub, they, in, they inherit from Sayyidina Muhammad the ability to crush the sins of people and revive the heart with the same light. The same light that goes out to destroy the sins of people because they're like sunshine. So you have the vastness of a sun, you know just the wilayat and sainthood of the smallest awliya which there are no small awliya, imagine the sun. Have you seen the earth in proportion to the sun? It's like less than a dot. All the inhabitants on the earth, what will happen in the presence of the sun? It will incinerate it, it dissolve it, no matter how huge that person thinks they are. In the presence of that sun it's nothing, nothing. That's not even the, the size of Prophet these are all within Sayyidina Muhammad There are There are sons that are billions of times larger, more powerful than this sun and universes will be lost in their presence. What do you think about the sins of somebody in the presence of that azimat that Allah dress upon their light? That's why we say, Astaghfirullah Azeem. That Allah grant us istighfar from Sifat al Adim that your might and majesty and power is beyond our comprehension. Allah's light can dissolve everything. So, it means then that reality of their light and the ability of that light then has an immense reality. But it requires the one to stop and find the cave, find the companionship. That each of the shaykhs represent the reality of Sayyidina Abbas Khidr salam. And if you can find that reality and know that I'm only going to be understanding and really witnessing this Khidr dress is if I truly found him and I won't find him with my physical eyes, I'll see the signs, I'll see everything around him comes to life. I'll see that the dead hearts of people come to life. Then how will I find him and really connect with him is through my soul. I'm going to sit and close my eyes and I'm going to make my meditation, my tafakkur and my contemplation. I'm going to ask for their madad and support and that to call them into that presence every night meditating, every night meditating. Asking to connect, asking to feel that energy, asking to be allowed to be dressed by that reality until it becomes a reality in which that becomes my companion. Because once Sayyidina Musa salam, they met up, now the journey began, let's go, let's go to this village where there's a man who has a boat. And there's an evil shaitan, he says an evil king coming to take everybody's boats. Let's go to this boat and bring it down. And nobody could see Sayyidina Khidr All they saw was Sayyidina Musa breaking a boat. 
And that's why he said his social pressure now. So following the unseen and meditating and doing muraqabah and, and, and you don't have to explain to people you're guided. You don't explain to people I, I'm following this reality because Sayyidina Musa was describing its difficulty. Why he broke this boat? Not because he cares about a boat but nobody can see Sayyidina Khidr breaking it. All they saw was Sayyidina Musa breaking a boat. What am I going to explain to people that I'm breaking this poor man's boat? And everything that transpires on this journey, it's about a social pressure. Because if you could see Sayyidina Khidr say, it's him, not me, he did it. So then that has a big understanding of our time now on this earth. We're so difficult with social pressure. Why I have to follow tariqah? Why I have to do these things? I don't have time to sit and do my zikr. People are going to make fun of me, whoa, 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 I keep going, you can't, it never ends. If that's what you're more worried about then that's the path you're going to take. If thousands of years before Allah is describing social pressure for Sayyidina Musa means then to overcome that reality and to understand that this path of mine is unseen. This connection of mine going to be unseen. I have to build that connection, build that energy, enter into that reality, that portal, that dress. And as a result that first test of bringing the boat down, there's going to be testing in my life. That boat was the secret of rizq and Sayyidina Khidr was teaching Sayyidina Musa that this is the man how he makes money. If this shaitan takes his boat he will never make money again or will hijack his rizq for shaitan. We're going to hide that boat for a while so that he doesn't give his rizq to shaitan. And that has to be the first understanding in tariqahs. If people want to come to a shaykh and be enriched and immediately get all the money and run and say, I don't know if it was from you and now go out and spend it for shaitan. That's not going to work. That's not going to happen. Even if you think you run Allah will pull it away another day. There's nobody taking anything from that reality. Means that whatever comes that person is going to be disciplined. Now they know that that boat went under water. When it went under water didn't break it and destroy it otherwise the tariqahs would have a discipline, whoever comes to them Allah would destroy the rizq. But no, He said we merely put a hole in the boat so that we have the attention of the student. This man they had his attention, there's a deep reality. As a result through the tarbiyah and training when they want to bring that boat back up that servant should know their allegiance to the tariqah and to the Muhammadan haqqaiq. Nothing of which comes to you is yours, it belongs to the nation. It belongs to the way of Sayyidina Muhammad And that your life, your death, everything about you is for that servanthood. And that's how the shaykhs live, everything about them is for their mission, their way, the propagation of the love of Sayyidina Muhammad That's why the boat is just brought down and not destroyed because at any moment their du'as and Allah test, Prophet test, the order comes and the rizq comes back up. But if the servant is not sure on what this rizq and where this rizq came then they fall prey to putting it into the hands of shayateen. Means they do everything that's not going to be bettering their akhirah. Because fi dunya hasanat wa akhira hasanat wa kina adhaba nar What Allah wants for these students is that we gave you a dunya so that you could build your akhirah. They're not two separate entities, separation of church and state is one entity. This earth 
was made for you to build your palace in Akhirah. And that's the only reason you have this existence. Not that you do whatever you want on this earth and hope and then you, <laughs> you may have a good place in heaven. Nobody even prepares like that for this earth. Well, I don't know, I just spend my money and maybe one day I'll have a home. But they use their dunya to build their akhirah. So when their last breath they built their palace, they built their relationship and the love with Sayyidina Muhammad We pray that Allah give us more understanding that now as we enter into these realities of muraqabah and the unseen and how to accompany the unseen servants of Allah you begin to read from verse 60, next few verses all the adab that Allah is writing, this is the mannerisms in which Allah has written on how to accompany these unseen servants and this reality. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.